that is officially designated by the French government. Now, which of the following is not a type of sparkling wine? So which is not sparkling wine? We've got A, Cava, B, Prosecco, C, uh, Barbara de Alba, uh, D, Cremant, E, Sec, and F, Moscato de Asti. Any takers? The correct answer there is C, Barbara de Alba. That's a red wine. Anybody know from where? Anyone heard of it? Anybody heard of it? It's from Italy. Uh, it's got a very low tannin count and a high acidity. Um, and all the others are sparkling wines produced outside of the Champagne region. Cava uh, is from Spain, Sect from Germany, Cremont is uh, French from the sparkling regions outside of Champagne. Um, commonly produced in Alsace, Bordeaux. Um, Prosecco and Moscato de Azzi are from Italy. So lots of other productions of uh, sparkling wines around. So the correct answer there was C, Barbara de Alba, the red wine from Italy, was the one that is not sparkling. Question number five, which American president was the first to serve champagne at a state dinner? You should all get this, surely. <laughs> no. So we've got George Washington, B, John Adams, C, Thomas Jefferson, D, Abraham Lincoln, and E, Theodore Roosevelt. C. Thomas Jefferson, that were fully ripened. Um, and the dry champagne also requires longer for aging for the best tastes. So um, the widow, Pomeray, was able to get some growers to agree to keep their grapes on the vines for longer. Um, and she did this by guaranteeing to uh, absorb any of the losses um, once they were picked, so she would cover the costs if they made any loss. So it was a risk, um, and uh, even I think her own staff are a bit sp uh, skeptical of it, but she gave it a shot and she was successful. And now 95% of all champagne is sold as brute. So see, she was a widow, a very uh, entrepreneurial widow. Probably wealthy too, yeah. So, number eight, which American military leader is credited with saving the historic champagne cellars of Epernay from destruction by the retreating Nazis? Was that General Eisenhower, Patton, or General Rommel? And the correct answer is General George Smith Patton Jr. Yeah. Yes, so that was Patton, yes, see, Patton. So the, the Nazis, they knew that their days were numbered after D-Day on the 6th of June 1944, uh, when the Allied troops landed um, along a stretch of heavily fortified French coastline to, to fight them off the beaches of Normandy. Um, and General uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower called the operation a crusade in which we will accept nothing less than full victory with more than 5,000 ships, 13,000 aircraft um, supporting the invasion. And by the day's end on uh, June 6, the Allies had gained a foothold in Normandy. Now, the, the D-Day, the cost was high. More than 9,000 Allied soldiers lost their lives or were wounded. Uh, but more than 10,000 soldiers began the march across Europe to defeat Hitler. Epernay, the, uh, the Nazis have stored dynamite to blow up miles of underground champagne cellars from uh, and bridges if they had to evacuate. But the city was spared when Patton's army took them completely by surprise on August 28, 1944. So the correct answer there was C, General Patton. How are we doing so far? Anybody on full marks? No. <laughs> okay. It's not about who wins and loses, it's about playing the game. <laughs> so, number nine, true or false? He would say that's good. The smaller bubbles means the better the champagne. What do we think? True. True is the correct answer. Size does matter. <laughs> so the champagne researcher, uh, Gerard Liga Belair, uh, he discovered that bubbles contain up to 30 times more flavour and aroma than the liquids. 
So that means a continuous stream of fine small bubbles acts as a, a flavour delivery system to your taste buds. And he estimates that up to 11 million bubbles can escape a standard full-size flute of champagne. There you go. It's a lot of bubbles. So now there is science to back up the claim that a smaller and more regular stream of bubbles are indeed best. So it's true for number nine. Number 10 interesting period in your history during prohibition when it was illegal to manufacture or sell alcohol the infamous chicago gangster al capone he preferred to drink champagne rather than which champagne so he preferred to drink which champagne rather than gin was it the dom perignon Vouve? oh my my i have to excuse my uh, pronunciation uh Vouve clico clico, clico. Uh, C. Pomeroy uh, or D. Louis Roeder? And the correct answer there is C. Apparently Al Capone was rather partial to a tipple of Pomeroy. There you go. Who would have thought? The gangsters of Champagne. So it was. Um, Apparently, uh, the, the, the Grenoble Champagne had been receiving large orders um, from a mysterious client in Chicago. Um, he never haggled about the price, promptly paid his bills, and then uh, he decided to go and see who this important client himself was. So he went to Chicago to try and meet him, um, and then apparently upon arrival he was greeted by the FBI agents who arrested him. Um, as unknown uh, as he was unknowingly, um, his important customer was the, the one and only Al Capone. The newspaper headlines read the count in the clink, but he was released a few days later. The producer, after uh, paying a large fine, obviously it was uh, Al Capone they were after rather than his champagne producer. <laughs> Number eleven. Who of the following was the first head of a champagne house to visit the United States? So was it uh, A, Louis Roeder, B, Claude Monet, Moe, C, Louis Pomeroy, D, Charles Hedschick, E, Johann Josef Krug, or F, Vuv Clicquot. There's a few to choose from there. And if you chose B, you would have been wrong. If you chose F, you would have been wrong. <laughs> but if you chose D, Charles uh, Heitzig, you would have been absolutely correct. The answer was D. And he founded his firm uh, before he turned 30. And he was the first head of a champagne house to ever visit the States, arriving in Boston in 1852. Uh, though his champagne had sent, been sent to America um, even before the, uh, the revolution. Um, not, not a particularly well-known one, maybe, but uh, most champagne viewers, uh, makers may view America as being too far away to, to do business, but he, uh, he viewed it a little bit differently as an untapped market brimming with opportunity, and he was a charismatic chap who uh, became very popular in the Americas, and uh, the orders poured in, and he was nicknamed Champagne Charlie. I don't know, maybe you might have heard of that one, Champagne Charlie. And at one point, apparently, he even owned a deed to a third of the land of the city of Denver. Anybody from Denver? No? No? Apparently, Champagne Charlie owned most of the city at one point. So the answer was D, Charles Hedgehog. So almost towards the end, question number 12. A four-ounce glass of champagne. Oh, that's a good one. It contains how many calories? So is it 120 calories? <laughs> I think we can guess which answer it's not. <laughs> so uh, I used to always joke about this until I found out it was actually uh, true. It's by adding the, the B, red wine, by adding red wine to the white wine. Um, I, I used to joke about that. I didn't realise it was actually correct. Uh, in the Champagne region, many of the, the red wine grapes are harvested, um, still produce red wines. And they're then added to the sparkling wine to create a slightly pigmented sparkling rosé. And uh, so literally translating uh, to white from black, 
These champagnes are produced using only red Pinot Noir and Pinot uh, Munier grapes. So the answer is B, red wine to white wine. And now question 15, the final question. Champagne acquires its unique sparkle from A, shaking the bottle, B, the second fermentation, C, the soil quality, D, the temperature, E, the grapes, or F, the added water, the water added. And the answer to that one, well, if you said A, shaking the bottle does give it a good old, uh, a good old fizz and pop, but uh, the actual answer is B, the second fermentation. We, we did uh, talk about that a little bit earlier on, so that's where it gets its unique sparkle from, the second fermentation um, from the yeast that gives it its sparkle. So that was the 15 questions. Did anybody get full marks? Nope. Okay. Let's have a look. Who have we got? Did anybody get, let's say, five or more? Hands up. Oh, a few of you.
seem to have revived on their own. Thank you.